this meeting was being recorded. Okay. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, once again, now that we're recording, thank you everybody for joining us and thank you to everybody watching this in the future on our YouTube channel, the Blind, uh, excuse me, Bluegrass Council of the Blinds YouTube channel. Today, we are gonna be talking about the accessibility options on streaming platforms. And that is referring to things like Apple TV, uh, the Roku player, Fire Stick, Amazon Fire Stick, things like that. So uh, introductions, my name is Sam Seavey. I am the Assistive Technology Program Manager at the Bluegrass Council of the Blind. And i um, happy to be sharing this information with you guys. If anyone in the future has any questions or would like information about the Bluegrass Council of the Blind, please feel free to contact us. You can give us a call 859-259-1834, or you can send us an email, info, I-N-F-O, at bcbky.org. All right, now that that is out of the way. So we're talking about accessibility on streaming platforms. Um, we A couple uh, AT seminars ago, we talked about audio description and in movies and TV shows. And in that um, meeting, we talked a little bit about how those are available on certain streaming platforms. But um, this time we're talking about the built-in accessibility on those platforms. What do you get right out of the box if you plug in your Apple TV? What kind of accessibility can you just go ahead and turn on and start using right away? And I've got, I'm gonna share my screen real quick here because we're going to watch a couple videos. And uh, all right, here we go. So I'm bringing up YouTube and we're going to watch a couple of videos. This first video is one of my videos on my, um, my YouTube channel. And in this video, I talk about the accessibility of the Apple TV streaming platform. Um, after this video, we'll, we'll watch one about the Fire Stick, Amazon Fire Stick accessibility, and then following that one about the Roku. So um, maybe after the video, we'll watch the video. And then after that, we can, maybe if anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to address those before we move on to the next video. All right. Here we go. Hey guys, it's Sam with The Blind Life. Welcome back to the channel where I help you learn how to live your best blind life. Today we are taking a look at the Apple TV and we're gonna be checking out the accessibility features for the visually impaired. So we actually have quite a few helpful accessibility options on Apple TVs, including some of our favorites, uh, VoiceOver and the Zoom magnifier. So to find those, first we need to navigate down to the settings. And about halfway down in the list, you'll find accessibility. Okay, I've gone ahead and turned voiceover on so you guys will be able to hear the menu options. But the first one is indeed voiceover. Voiceover on, one of two. And in the voiceover section here, we have a lot of settings that we can adjust. Voiceover help, button, navigation style. Direct top, verbosity, button, speech, voice, speech rate, pronunciations, button, two, speech rate, 59%, button, three of four. So you see a lot of the ones that we're used to on other devices like iPhones and iPads. Vision, voiceover, on, button, one of seven, zoom, on, button, two of seven. So we also have the zoom magnifier and I've got it already turned on. You get some information down here at the bottom on how to use zoom on the Apple TV, but we'll come back to that in a second. Display accommodations, off, button, three of seven. Display accommodations, in there you can adjust the colors and even light sensitivity. Bold text, on, four of seven. Increase contrast, button, five of seven. Then you have a couple options for low vision, so you can bold the text, which I have that turned on, and you can increase contrast. Motion, button, six Motion. Of seven. Motion is another visual low vision option. Six of audio descriptions, off, 
Seven of seven. And then we have audio descriptions. So if this is turned on, as you're watching content, if audio descriptions are available, it will automatically play those. So this could be a very good option for some of you guys out there. Accessibility short, mono audio, general. Accessibility shortcut, voiceover, button, one of one. Triple click menu four, selected, voiceover, one of five. So then you have the accessibility shortcut. And it's a triple click of either the menu button or the back button, depending on what generation of Apple TV you're using. You have a whole list of options here you can choose from. I've got it set to voiceover because that's one that I'm going to be using the most. But you can choose any one of these here. But what it is, is it allows you to quickly toggle on and off one of these options by triple clicking that button. So as you see here, if I triple click my button, click, click, click. Voiceover off. We've turned off voiceover, click, click, click. Voiceover on. Selected. Turns it back on. Voiceover, one of five. Now voiceover obviously works just like it does on other Apple devices. As you highlight a certain item, it will read that out loud. Music, row two, column three, podcasts. Row two, Netflix. Row three, column four. Another benefit of voiceover though is if you are inside of an app like Netflix, it will read all that information as well. So if you have the zoom magnifier turned on, like I do, in order to zoom in on your screen, you're gonna take two fingers and double tap and slide up or down on your touchpad. It's very similar to the gesture on an iPhone or an iPad where you use three fingers, double tap and slide. So double tap, 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 and slide up slide down to adjust the size of the magnification. When you are zoomed in, the focus follows your indicator box here. So if I swipe to the right, or excuse me, left, it goes with it. If I go down, it goes with it and follows it along. If I wanted to look at a different part of the screen, very easy, I just tap the touch panel here with two fingers. A little notification pops up letting me know that I'm in pan mode. And now if I just take one finger, I can slide around and you get a little visual indicator of where you are on the screen there. To get out of the pan mode, once again, two finger tap. Now we're out of the pan mode and we're following the focus again. To zoom out, once again, double tap two fingers and slide down. So that is the accessibility options for the blind and visually impaired available on the Apple TV. One last thing I will mention that can be very helpful is the integration of Siri through the remote. So you can press and hold the Siri button here on the remote and give Siri commands like open Netflix, search for the blind life on YouTube. You can give these commands and she will do the hard work for you. So definitely utilize Siri on the Apple TV. Okay guys, thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions about this Apple TV accessibility or anything Apple TV, please let me know in the comments down below. If you'd like to learn how to cast your iPhone or iPad screen onto your Apple TV so you can see your iPhone or iPad screen on a much larger television screen, check out that video popping out of the corner right there or also located in the description down below. But that's it guys, as always, Sam with The Blind Life. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time. Okay, so that was how to do the Apple accessibility, or excuse me, accessibility on an Apple device. Apple TV. Does anybody have any questions about that? I got one. Sure. Well, uh, was you using your phone to do that? Or was you using a remote or what was you doing? I was using the remote that came with the Apple TV. Um, oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. And so there's a couple different generations of Apple TV available now, and they've recently changed the remote, actually. So some of the options, um, some of the, the ways that you like zoom in, have changed, but uh, most of the accessibility is the same as what we just saw in that video. Yeah. Uh, I have a question, Sam. Sure. This is Chris, and um, I've got an Apple TV. I was 
haven't always used the voiceover, but I was, I turned around a couple of weeks ago. And then yesterday I discovered that it seemed like all of a sudden the navigation on my Apple TV remote, I could only go sideways. And if I tried to go up or down, it would say on or off. Does, okay. Does that sound like anything you have an idea how to fix? You may, um, it may be something to do with, vo is voiceover still turned on when you do that? It's when I have voiceover turned on, yes. Okay, yeah, it, there's, you may be in one of the settings. So uh, at least on iPhones and iPads, um, sideways, flicking sideways left or right is how you navigate. But then if you flick up or down, it has a different option um, depending on what setting you're on at the, currently. So the Apple TV may have something similar where you, maybe you're in the volume setting and when you flick up or down, it's raising or lowering the volume or something, something similar to that. Um, I would try, do you have the shortcut set up on the remote to quickly turn voiceover on and off? No, I don't. Okay. Well, you can, you, I think, believe you can ask Siri to turn voiceover off also. Um, or, and then, so if you turn it off and then maybe try to turn it back on, maybe that will reset it back to default working normally, um, mm -hmm. or you could turn it off and then r jump over into the settings and see if maybe something is turned on that's not supposed to be, or I don't, you yeah. know, it doesn't, it doesn't ring a bell to me exactly what that is, but I'm also, I don't use the Apple TV that much really to know all the ins and outs of that kind of stuff. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that, would be, that would be my guess. Okay. Thank so you. Chris. Yeah. Can you, can you call the um, Apple Visibility Line? And wouldn't they be able to help you with that, maybe? That's a good good idea as well. I've never I've I've never done that. This just kind of showed up the other day. So if I can't, you know, figure it out quickly, I'll try that. Thanks, Marty. Okay. Yeah, the Apple helpline for accessibility, they're they're pretty friendly there. Okay. Okay, so any other questions before we go on to the next video? All right. So this next one is for the Fire Stick. Fire Stick uh, accessibility or Fire TV accessibility. And first things first, I'd like to give um, the uh, Visor Clinic, huge thank you for, we're using their video for this, um, this meeting. This, uh, they, they have a, a ton of great accessibility videos. So I recommend people go check out their YouTube, their YouTube channel, Visor Clinic. And um, so full disclosure, this isn't our video, but I I'm sure they won't have any problems with us using it for this. All right, we'll go ahead and play this one. So we're going through the built-in accessibility settings for Fire TV Stick. Uh, first, I wanted to go over the remote and all the buttons that it has on it. On the top left corner, there is the power on and off. Right in the center below that is the, it's actually the voice key. So it activates uh, Alexa so that you can give commands through the remote. There is a circle pad with a button in the middle. This controls up, down, right, left, and then OK is in the middle. On the first row underneath the circle pad, there's the what they call the back button. Middle button is the home button, and the right button, we call it the hamburger menu, but it's actually in, the, in Alexa, it's called the menu button. Second row down is the rewind. Middle button is play stop. And on the right is fast forward. Right below that, you have a toggle button that goes up and down. The top of the toggle button is volume up. The bottom of the toggle button is volume down. Right below that, there's a single button and that is the mute button. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna look at is voice view. To turn voice view on, and you can do this while you're setting up Fire TV, you have to hit the menu button and the back button 
at the same time. Voice you ready, home two of seven. When you hold it down, it turns on. Use left and right to move between items. It will give you instructions on what to do. You use the circle buttons Your to move left to right seven. and up and down. Movies, four of TV shows, thought apps, six of settings. We're gonna go into seven. settings. One, no network, to display an application. We're gonna go over to accessibility. Preferences, my fight accessibility, 10 of 12. Push the middle button for okay. Accessibility, closed cap voice view. Two when we go down to voice view, I'm going to hit the OK button. Voice view screen reader. There's voice a few options on. you have. One of seven. Reading speed. You can change voice the reading speed. Normal. Two of seven. Vol a speech of volume. volume. Sounds volume. You can change the sounds volume. Device volume. Key echo words. You can change what you want reader. the voice Nine. to echo. No characters. Either characters, no check. words, words. Check. characters and words, or both. Not checked. Four, Hit the back button to get back to this screen. Punctuation, punctuation level. level. Voice view you can choose what one. punctuation you want spoken. Voice view, voice view tutorial. The voice seven view tutorial, seven. you can get in at any Move time and, down to and it will give you items. a full tutorial on how Learn to use how speech. To use the voice view screen reader. If I hit the home button on the remote, it will take us back home. to the Two home screen. Seven. Now we can Use also, right if I hit the down windows. button, one. we can Reason start getting Netflix into button. some of the apps. Use up and down so if we go into Netflix apps. and we activate. On the browse screen, in the spot. Now we can move up and row. down or left to right titles in this row. to be able to find the what you want to find. Too. Conversation in the trending now row. 75 in the in the train go back to home 70 home two of seven so if you wanted to use the dictation button on the remote you press and hold down and then we can ask it to actually do what we call direct play which is play something directly onto the app that we know it's on so play last kingdom on netflix it's a good show getting the last kingdom from netflix Plane. 57. Now we can also ask. Plane. Stop. Paused. 50. Paused. Now I can ask minutes. it. 33 seconds remaining. Go home. Home. Two of seven. Okay. Now if we didn't know. Left and right to move between items. If we didn't know what program played on what app, we could just ask it to play a program and it will give us options. Play Dawson's Creek. I can play that on Prime Video or Hulu. Which would you like? Prime Video. Getting Dawson's Creek from Prime Video. Now, if you noticed, it made me push the button again to say Prime Video. Go back home. Home, two of seven. If you don't have your remote or you want to use your smart speaker, you can use the Echo or Dot to control programming as well. And you can also do direct, TV, direct play. Computer, play The Last Kingdom on Netflix. Getting The Last Kingdom from Netflix. Computer, stop. Computer, go home. Now to get the, the two to pair up, you have to go into your Alexa app and go into TV and video and pair up the two. So that is something you have to do on one of your smart devices. Okay, so we can also play a program without using direct play. Computer, play Dawson's Creek. I can play that on Prime Video or Hulu. Which would you like? Prime Video. Getting Dawson's Creek from Prime Video. Computer, go home. 
You can also use uh, the Alexa button on your remote to do certain things that you can do on your smart speaker. For example, what's the weather? Right now in Morrison, it's 40 degrees Fahrenheit with mostly... But there are certain things that are limited when you're using the TV, the Fire Stick TV. Set an alarm for 5.30 p.m. Alarms are not currently supported on this device. So the last thing we're gonna look at is the screen magnifier. There's a shortcut way to do it on your remote. You press the back button and the fast forward button at the same time, about the same length as you do if you wanna turn on the voice view. That will turn on your screen magnifier and it will also show you the list. So, if you want to move around the screen, you have to push the menu button with some combination of button to do things. So for instance, if I wanted to increase the magnification, I would push the menu button and the fast forward button. And that increases magnification. If you notice up in the top right corner, you can see the square and see where you're at on the screen. To decrease magnification, you hit the menu button and rewind. To move around the screen, we're gonna make it the magnification a little higher. And to move around the screen or pan around the screen, you wanna hit the menu button and either right to move right or left to move left, down or up. Thank you for watching our tutorial on accessibility features built in to the Fire TV Stick for people who are visually impaired or blind. All right, so that was. Please don't forget to like this video. The fire stick. Anybody have any questions or comments? I personally, um, I love the voice view voice. I think it's one of the best screen reader voices on the market right now. I've been a big fan of that for a long time. I'm not crazy about the magnification on the fire stick, how you just have to click left, right, up, down to kind of zoom around. It, it, it's kind of clunky in my opinion. Does anybody have any questions? Does anybody have a fire stick? I should just ask that. I, I have one, but I haven't used the accessibility on it yet. Um, it's one that my wife uses more than I do. So I'm, I'm going to try it out now that I know how, how it works. Okay. So then this last one we're going to watch is for the Roku player. Uh, which is the third streaming platform we're going to talk about. And this is the accessibility for it. This is another video by the Visor Clinic. Uh, once again, huge thank you to them for letting us use this video. Definitely go check out their YouTube channel. A lot of good information. Okay, we're going to watch this one. We are going to talk about accessibility features of Roku streaming media player featuring the Roku Ultra. This is the voice remote for the Roku Ultra and has quite a few buttons, but they're all tactile. At the top is the power button. Below that is the go back button on the left, the home button on the right. Below that is a four way directional keypad with OK in the middle. Below the directional keypad from left to right is a refresh button, microphone button, and the asterisk button. Below that is rewind, pause, play in the middle, and fast forward on the right. Then below that you have four quick access buttons. 
On the left is Netflix and Hulu. On the right, Sling TV and CBS All Access. At the very bottom of the remote are two buttons marked A and B. Those are for use in games if you download them. To turn on the voice guide, you're going to press the asterisk button four times quickly. Audio guide enabled. In main menu, tone button one of eight. And in navigating through the menu. In, in main menu, search button six. In main menu, streaming channels button. In main menu, settings button. In settings, network button one of ten. From the, Accessibility, button 6 of 10. Inaccessibility, captions mode, button. Audio guide, button 4 of 7. We can the turn the audio, audio guide, guide on or off the and adjust the speech rate, but we cannot change the voice. <laughs> it's not a good voice. Really? In main menu, tone, button 1 of 8. We're going to use the microphone button to request it play a specific episode. Play the play the Last Kingdom on Netflix. When we do that, it is only going to come up with the options for whatever program you're looking for. It's in search results, season three, 2018, present, button, one of four. Three results, Netflix included with subscription, button, one of three. You'll have to use to the remote to navigate to that option. On the profile selection screen, who's watching Netflix? Victor on the browse screen in the popular on the in the continue watching for victoria row on the details screen for the last kingdom resume s3 and one playing playing 53 minutes as of march 5th Roku and the Amazon Echo have started to work together and Echo can be used to control some features on Roku. Echo, launch Netflix on Roku. Getting Netflix from Roku. As you can see, Netflix is one thing that is not compatible with the Amazon Echo and it gives you information to use the Roku remote to access Netflix. Echo, launch Hulu on Roku. Getting Hulu from Roku. And once we enter programming, you can use your Amazon Echo to control playback features. Echo, pause Roku. Echo, resume Roku. Echo, go home on Roku. Echo, turn power off on Roku. Echo, turn power off on Roku. So as you can see, there are some commands that will not work with the Amazon Echo on Roku. We are now going to try using our Google Home to control the Roku. Okay, Google, play The Last Kingdom on Roku. Okay, showing The Last Kingdom on Roku. It won't do direct play, and if you notice, in the top right-hand corner, it says use the remote to get a full list of results. So we'd still have to navigate from here with our remote 
in order to get it to play in Netflix. Okay, Google, pause Roku. Notice in the top right hand corner, it says use your Roku remote to access Netflix. Google Home is unable to provide playback controls in Netflix. Now we're going to use the shortcut buttons on the remote to access an app. In this instance, we're going to access Hulu by pushing the bottom left hand button. And it will make us directly into Hulu. We will then use Google Home to access our playback controls. Okay, Google, pause Roku. Okay, Google, play Roku. As you can see, Google Home was able to control playback options in Hulu when it wasn't in Netflix. Thank you for watching our video on accessibility features for people with visual impairments on the Roku. Okay. Have you built your house? <laughs> so, do you guys have any questions about the um, Roku player? Seems like Roku has a lot, lot more bugs in it than the other two. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It doesn't, it doesn't seem to work as well. Right. So let's see. I'm going to zoom in. Oh. Okay. Um, just a second. Okay. So yeah, yeah. So it doesn't. If if someone were thinking about picking up a streaming platform or streaming device between these three. I, I kind of feel like the Amazon Fire Stick was the best um, out of all three. It seemed to have the most features and the most um, options for controlling it without needing to like use the remote and that sort of thing. Um, it also happens to believe, be, I believe, the cheapest out of the three. Um, I think the Amazon Fire Stick is only like about $30. So it's not too bad. Um, does that's anybody, about, sorry, go ahead. Ro I said that's about what Roku calls too. Close to it, about $30, $35. Yeah, um, Roku, and it looks like Roku doesn't even have any kind of screen magnification option. Yeah, I know. The other two did. Yeah. Um, Fire Stick does look like it's the best one. Yeah, just going by that especially if you have an Amazon Echo and you want to be able to control it fully with the Echo. Mm -hmm. um, plus it has the, it has a built into the mic to the, or has the microphone button built into the remote. Uh, the Apple TV does as well. The Roku does as well. All three of them do. Um, the Apple TV, in my opinion, has a little bit better screen magnifier, uh, has the best, I think, out of the three or out of the two, I guess I should say. Hey, Sam, you know how to, how to hook it up, the Roku to you, like your computer? I mean, to like the monitor? I know you can do it, I just don't know how. Yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty simple. Um, it just has an HDMI cable, yeah. uh -huh. um, and you just plug that right into your TV. And you just make sure the TV is set to whichever HDMI input you plug it into. Um, you know, most TVs have like two or three HDMI uh, ports on the back. Right. Uh, they're, they're numbered, you know, uh, number one, number two, number three. So you just yeah. make sure this TV is set to input number one or HDMI one or whichever one you plug into. And then it should show up on the screen there. 
Well, I, don't, I know that, but what I meant was like to your monitor, your computer monitor. Can you hook it up to that? Yeah, it would be the same thing. Most computer monitors have an HDMI port. Yeah, um, they do. do. Yeah, so, so you would, it's the exact same thing. You would just plug it up to that. Okay. And then in that case, though, you if you have a computer plugged up to the monitor also, you would need to change the input on the monitor to the HDMI if you wanted to watch TV or whatever on the um, the Roku or the Fire Stick, whatever you use. Yeah, I had I had one hooked up one time. I had to flip it back and forth or use one or the other. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, guys, does anybody have, have any questions or any comments about this? So, okay, well, that was, that was the, um, the seminar today. We we're just demonstrating the accessibility options on those streaming platforms. Um, if you guys have any questions or would like to, any more information about this, please feel free to contact us at the Bluegrass Council of the Blind. I would be happy to help. We have in the office, we have an Apple TV and a Fire Stick, uh, so we could do demonstrations of these in person. If that's, if that's uh, something you're interested in, just give us a call and let us know. All right, I'm going to stop the recording.